there are three things that happen. I have been observing. So one is um, nervous because uh, whenever Prabhu asked class or someone asked, you know, what to speak, what to read, you know, how to present the contemplation of the conception and all. And then there, there are the two good things also happen. One is um, most of the students can experience that once their exam is over, they will like relieved, right? Oh man, this tough exam is over, something like that. And the third important thing uh, happens. So you learn something. I mean, you may say like, uh, I'm attending the uh, Bhakti Vriksha programs and Sunday programs. So anyway, I'm learning something. But when you are in like a driver's seat, you want to give the class, you have to give the class, then you read something, you hear something. So definitely that um, understanding of that concept is uh, more than the others. So it's a good thing, like when we have a full good understanding and conviction, then uh, we practically apply that, we can live by that. And the other best thing is when we live by that, then we can confidently tell to others and live by example. So being said that, so if someone approach you to give class, if you would like to take my advice, please take it up. It has a good benefits. Um, so I would like to thank um, to the Ram, uh, Ram Tulsi Prabhuji and Ram Chandra Prabhuji for giving this opportunity. Uh, so today we are going to discuss about the Bhagavad Gita verse um, chapter 2, um, chapter 2 and verse 20. So let's uh, all seek the blessings of our uh, gurus, spiritual masters, eventually to Srila Prabhupada and uh, Gauritai and Radha Shamsundar so that they can give us the um, blessings so we can uh, the presentation goes well and good. Oh Magna Timirandasya Gnana Jana Shalakya Chashpuran Vitam Yena Tasmay Sri Guru Namanama Namaha Sri Krishna Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Tadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavamsha Sri Rupam Sakrajatam Sagana Ragunatan Vitantam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Chamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rupasya Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavibyo Namunamaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinavani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Irvishesha Shunyavadi Pakshata Deshatarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we are reading from the chapter 2, contents of Gita summarized, Bhagavad Gita as it is, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Na jayate mriyate va kadachin, na yam bhuta bhavita na bhuyaha, ajo nitya shashvato yam purano, na hanyate hanyamane sharire. Anyone from Prabhu would like to read? 
न जायते मृत्यु ते सदाचे नयम भूतवा भविता वो न भूजया अजो नित्या शास्त्रयम पुरानो न हन्यते हन्य माने शरीरे boys water rich nandini na jayate namaste matadi chanayam dukha kavita dana pura ajanitya sasatoyam purano na hanyate hanyamane shirire thank you very much so let's go by synonyms uh, Na never. Jayate takes the birth. Mriyate dies. Va either. Kadachit at any time, past, present, or future. Na never. Abhyam this. Bhuta having come into the being. Pavita, welcome to be. Va are, na not. Buya, ar is again coming to be. Aja, unborn. Nitya, eternal. Shashvata, permanent. Avyayam, this. Purna, the oldest. Na, never. Hanyate, is killed. Hanyamane, being killed. Sharire, the body. Translation and proposed by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain purport qualitatively the small atomic fragmental part of the supreme spirit is the one with the supreme he undergoes no changes like the body sometimes the soul is called steady or kutastha. The body is subject to the six kinds of transformations. It takes birth from the womb of the mother's body, remains for some time, grows, produces some effects, gradually dwindles, and at last vanishes into oblivion. The soul, however, does not go through such changes. Soul is, the soul is not born, but because it takes on the material body, the body takes its birth. The soul does not take birth there. And the soul does not die. Anything which has a birth also has a death. And because the soul has no birth, he therefore has no past, present or future. He is eternal, ever existing and primeval. That is, there is no trace in the history of his coming to a being. Under the impression of the body, we seek the history of the birth, etc., of the soul. The soul does not at any time become old as the body does. The so-called old man, therefore, feels himself 
to be in the same spirit as in his childhood or youth. The changes of the body do not affect the soul. The soul does not deteriorate like a tree, nor anything material. The soul has no byproduct either. The byproducts of the body, namely children, are also different individual souls. And owing to the body, they appear as the children of the particular man. The body develops because of the soul's presence. But the soul has neither offshoots nor change. Therefore, the soul is free from these six changes of the body. In the Katha Upanishad, Upanishad 1.2.18, we also find a similar passage which reads, Na jayate mriyate va vipachin nayam kutachan na bhuya kachit ajo nitya shashvato yam purana na hanyate hanyamane sharire. The meaning and purport of these words is the same as in the Bhagavad Gita. But here in these words, there is a one special word vipachit, which means learned or with knowledge. The soul is full of knowledge or full always with the consciousness. Therefore, the consciousness is a symptom of the soul. Even if one does not find the soul within the heart where he is situated, one can still understand the presence of the soul simply by the presence of consciousness. Sometimes we do not find the sun in the sky owing to the clouds or for some other reasons. But the light of the sun is always there and we are convinced that it is there for daytime. As soon as there is a little light in the sky early in the morning, we can understand that the sun is in the sky. Similarly, since there is a some consciousness in all bodies, whether a man or an animal, we can understand the presence of the soul. This consciousness of the soul is, however, different from the consciousness of the Supreme, because the Supreme Consciousness is all knowledge, past, present and future. The consciousness of the individual soul is prone to be forgetful. When he is forgetful of his real nature, he obtains education, enlightenment from the superior lessons of Krishna. But Krishna is not like, a, not like the forgetful soul. If so, Krishna's teachings of Bhagavad Gita would be useless. There are the two kinds of the souls, namely the minute particle soul called Anu Atma and the super soul Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in the Katha Upanishad 1.2.20 in this way. Anu Anyan Mahato Mahiyan Atmasya Jantor Nihito Guhyam Tam akrutaha pashyat vita soko da datuha prasadan mahimanam atmanaha. Both the super, super soul paramatma and the atomic soul jivatma are situated on the same tree of the body within the same heart of the living being. And the only one who has become free from all material desires as well as the lamentations can, by the grace of the Supreme, understand the glories of the soul. Krishna is a fountainhead of the super soul also, as it will be disclosed in the following chapters. And Arjuna is atomic soul, forgetful of his real nature. Therefore, he requires to be enlightened by the Krishna or by his bona fide representative the spiritual master om ajnana timirandasya gnananjana sulake chashkulam tamena tasmay shri guru vidyam so i named this uh, title of this presentation as a glories of the soul because um, in this uh, words Lord Krishna is explaining uh, the glories of our self. Being uh, we are in the body, 
we cannot understand the body platform, but how wonderful we are actually. So Prabhupada also somewhere mentioned this word, glories of the souls. I thought it will be nice, it will be more appropriate to name the presentation like that. And uh, the caption is soul and you two bodies, not equal to body. So I divided this uh, presentation into the three parts, segments. Uh, this is how, what, and why. So in the how, we try to understand what, uh, how Lord Krishna is trying to explain the concept of the soul. What technique, what strategy. It's very nice if you know how it is explaining, so it's very easy to perceive. And the what. So in the what section, so we can unpack all the sub-components, elements, all, which are all explained in these words with the uh, analogies and uh, practical examples, observations that I encounter as a, um, in my dealings and then how that relates to these words so that we can quickly relate and understand. And the why, which is the most important thing, because whatever we do, we do for some benefits, right? Even the spiritual also, we are spending some time, energy here, coming here because for some benefits, right? It's uh, called a uh, Sanskrit word called Prayojana. So there should be some uh, benefits, right? By understanding the concept of the soul, what are the benefits? And also, uh, the most important thing is practical application. That's the, eventually that's the, our purpose. Not just information, eventually we think information can be transcended to transformation. And then we can, we can apply, then that makes the real return on investment. So, how? Most of you know chapter 2 described as a uh, Sankhya Yoga. S Sankhya means the number and the Sankhya means analysis or analytical. So the Lord Krishna is explaining uh, not just is not explaining soul is yes soul is like that no soul is is explaining soul in relationship to the uh, something which we can perceive for instance the body and uh, especially the the technique that was uh, it was described by our uh, acharyas it is called uh, in Upanishad technique called neti or naiti like it's kind of a theory of neg negation if someone asks uh, uh, understand uh, who are you so you can say yeah am i this body no, I don't think so. I'm not. I'm. I'm this body because the body is made up of all these five elements: earth, water, ether, fire. So, am I this earth and water? No, no, I don't think so. I'm earth and water. So that means am I body? Am I this mind? No, you are not the mind. So like that, you will negate the everything, and then you come to the affirmation, right? So kind of a, this is called theory of negation. For example, uh, if you want to explain someone how is the who never experienced or eaten the rasagulla, right? But he has experience of uh, uh, eating the gulab jam and uh, laddu and jalebi. So we can explain that yeah, the rasagulla is not in the not looks like a gulab jam, not that not that color, and the uh, Rasagulla is also not the same shape like a zigzag shape like a jalebi, and Rasagulla is also not made with the same ingredients as we made ladu. So it's like a, by telling like this, we understand that Rasagulla is not this, Rasagulla is not that. So we can understand what is Rasagulla. So it's like that. Lord Krishna is also trying to explain the soul in terms of not this, not that, 
and then we can understand and also lord krishna is trying to explain the soul in terms of the body because whatever we see around here in terms of body right like we go through the every day that thing like a body pains and every day morning when we wake up we look at our face and you know it's a it's a everything we see around is a, related to the body so lord krishna is trying to explain the concept of the soul in comparison to the body so that we can we can easily understand so this is the crux of this whole uh, words uh, the sixth transformation body goes through the sixth transformation uh, this sixth transformation is called shed shed vikaras that's what it tells, it tells in the sanskrit so this sixth transformations um, all of our uh, further slides depends on this it all derived from this because this is this this concept is like a foundation for the uh, further slides so the six transformations the soul um, takes the birth and um, uh, sorry the body takes the birth and uh, it uh, stays for some time and uh, it grows and uh, it gives some by products and it dwindles and dies eventually so these are the six uh, things which we experience in our lives and also around us so lord krishna is explaining this is the something applies to the body but the soul this does not apply to the soul only body goes to the this this um, all this transformation right we see that uh, um some people uh, focus more on health so much uh, time money and uh, they spend on the health um uh, actually yes health is important even we also try to be healthy we eat healthy prasadam yoga and uh, we do all the lifestyle things that's very important health we also try to understand why health is important for body health is important the further slides but here the point here it is in generally uh, the too much focus on the to um make it a better um the body and uh, vitality vitality is uh, not uh, really important you know too much focus on the health because anyway this body is going to die one day it has expiry date actually we don't uh, we don't have a very uh, qualified astrologers now probably they may they some somewhere but if we give the our uh, kundali so our uh, our uh, date of birth and date of time and all they can exactly point out what is our life span our age so this body is already has a expiry date as a you know as a medicine has a expiry date it also has a expiry date so the the essence here it is uh, like we not required to focus much on health to the extent that we can forget the actual purpose of this body right um and then this uh, bir no birth and no death the soul has a no birth and no death but body has a birth and death anything has a birth has a death the soul body has a birth and death soul unborn aja soul never born soul don't have a death no birth either it is ever existing eternal even um there are the so much of a uh, scientific study also happened um on this even if you google it 
uh, reincarnation, uh, University of Virginia School of Medicine. You will find so much, so many, so much of material and uh, abundant uh, test uh, uh, the the case studies done. So like a life after life. So people die and then they remember their previous life exactly where they were born, their home. They also find out the, their address and after they take them, they also tell that, oh yeah, here, uh, why previously the home, the door was here, why it happened here. So they, they get into that detail. So that means what? What is happening here? That means they were there before too. So what they are that? What that they are there, that is the soul, that's a living entity, living. That's not the body. See? So it's just uh, we are transmigrating from the body to another body. That's it. But otherwise, we are we are all we, we are there. So that's why here Krishna is explaining there is a birth and death to the uh, to the body, but not the soul. Soul is keep transmigrating from body to body. You see this slide. So whenever I uh, visit um, any uh, waterfalls or anything, this is something, uh, this strikes me actually. You, you just look at the waterfall, like you know, water keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. The drop you can see, you cannot see anymore. But that fresh water is coming. So this uh, somehow other it uh, strikes me, the, this uh, journey of this uh, uh, soul. It's keep traveling, keep coming. So that's I thought just to make appropriate for this slide in case you are wondering why I put this waterfall here. Um, and uh, as we know that the six transformations are there, right? So takes birth, stay for some time, grow, some byproducts, means the children, not only children, even as some other substances and all, and uh, um, dwindle and die. So, so this six uh, transformation is there. So the question comes, so why, why these uh, six uh, things are happening? Why these uh, six stages are happening to the body? Because it's explained that uh, the time factor is acting, acting on it. Probably you might know that time is a, not a spiritual, it's a material factor. And the body is also material. So time is a material thing, so it is working on the body which is material. Time cannot work on the soul because soul is a spiritual. So that's why there is no past, present or future for the soul, right? So in the purports also it's explained that soul is a kutastha. Kutastha, sta, sta means it's a situated, like a study. Soul, soul is a very, very studied. It won't, uh, uh, it's not impact by any, uh, any time. <clears throat> So if that is the fact, then the, why I become, you know, I become grow and uh, old and go to all these changes. You know, this is a very common question, right? So yeah, well, that is happening to the body, not to you. You means the soul, that all these six transformation is happening to the body, not to the soul. So maybe that may leads to the another question. Right. All this is, uh, if you remember, coming back to this, this strategy, the, how Lord Krishna is trying to explain, you know, it's like a negating everything, step by step, step by step. So then, why, why I'm feeling uh, this, all this uh, transformation, all this uh, birth, death, old age, disease, why I am feeling like this? So it's explained that, it's happening because of the false ego. We identifying ourselves with the body. Ego, the fall, ego means uh, ahankara. If you remember the words from the uh, Bhagavad Gita 
प्रकृते क्रियमाना गुणे कर्मा सर्वश अहंकार विमूढ़ात्मा कर्ता अहम मनते अहंकार विमूढ़ात्मा सो बाडी विथ द फॉल्स यू थिंग्स दट आई एम द डूअर सो सेम थिंग वी वी ऐडेंटिफाई अवर् सेलफ विथ द बाडी दट ईडेटिटी इज कॉल ईगो बट दैट ईज अ फॉल्स ईडेटिटी देन द वाट इज द ट्रू ईडेटिटी ट्रू ईडेटिटी इज डिफाइन इन अवर् स्क्रिप्चर्स जीवेर स्वरूप हो कृष्ण नित्य दास वी आर द एटर्नल सर्वेंट्स ऑफ द कृष्ण दट इज अवर रियल ईडेटिटी बट वेन वी डोट नो द अवर ईडेटिटी देन वी विल बी बिवल्टर्ड so and also we can there are so many practical proof also souls presence in the body right so as i said earlier so the spirit of the soul is the in the is the same even the in the old person or a young person the soul the power of the soul is the same it's always active so what is changing only the body is the changing right it's explained that um, the when when we uh, if you observe as we becoming older we feel frustration why we feel frustration because when i am the young i can able to do certain things very and then when as i'm getting older i cannot do the same thing very qualitatively very accurately as i as i'm getting older because you know that gives a frustration but inside my heart is telling you know i want to do that 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 uh, activeness is al- already there but the only thing is the body is not cooperating but that spirit of the soul is there that active activity the activeness soul is always active right um this is a very uh, interesting thing um recently i went to the uh, doctor uh, my personal room is there <laughs> so i was uh, just regular physical physical medicals so uh, he said some interesting thing actually strike me Uh, he said as we getting older our metabolism will reduce metabolism means uh, uh, like our ability to digest food so but uh, somehow other our body don't understand our body don't uh, um, learn that he said he, uh, when i heard this thing really strike me i think he is whatever is telling something making sense something disconnection is there but after reading this soul i thought maybe if he's a hari krishna doctor maybe you'd have been told differently <laughs> so basically what is trying to say uh, the the soul soul is always active even, even when i was young i ate this much and when i getting older also i have i have a urge to eat but the problem is my body is not cooperating but i am up for it right even if you see the small kids like they go the all the uh, the staircases in a 5 minutes they can do 10 times you know by looking at them oh we also see that i can also you know i wish i can also do it but that what i'm trying to say here that the spirit is there only thing is your body is not cooperating that is not you that's lord krishna is keep explaining that but that spirit is there right so that's what dr krishna is trying to explain that uh, the presence of the soul is there in the body because that spirit is always there and the symptom of the soul so symptom of the soul is a consciousness right even the humans have a consciousness right if someone is trying to attack or something will respond even the if you see small ants or animals or birds uh, if you try to uh, touch them 
they will fly or they will try to escape. That means to say there is a consciousness is there. Unfortunately, some religions around us don't accept this. They say that only uh, humans have a soul and they have a consciousness and then the others, animals and the plants, they are covered. Of course, we are also covered. I can able to hear only within the four walls. I cannot hear what is happening outside. And uh, there are certain things uh, animals do far better than us. Last time, uh, Kavi Chandra Maharaj was explaining about the dogs. Dogs' smelling power is a hundred times bigger than us, right? Smarter than us. So they 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 have a consciousness, right? So whichever our Shastra says that whichever has a uh, kind of a reciprocation or uh, reacting to our actions and that means they have a consciousness. If they have a consciousness, that means they, there is a soul. Um, even, the, even the plants too, right? The plants, uh, they, they reach out to the sun for the energy and their roots reach out to the water for their uh, nourishment and sometimes roots will you know uh, you know strip through the you know pierce through the wall and goes the the what is that uh, the road also we can see the roots so that means trees tree also has that uh, uh, urge to grow and that uh, um, um, that consciousness it's growing, right? It has a, some uh, sense of life is there. Um, just a small example. Um, on the other day in my backyard, I was just uh, cleaning all the weeds and all. And then um, that night, I had a very night <laughs> because all my shoulder it's got all these uh, um, rashes. It's like called poison ivy. So. When I look at that, that rash, I see, I see the angry of that poison ivy here. <laughs> it's like, so uh, the trees are, trees also attack, you know, trees also have that, some trees are very angry. We have some good thing like our trees are very, you know, gives the fruits and flowers, but also some trees are very dangerous. We should be very careful. But anyway, the point here it is, they are conscious. They are conscious and uh, of course their conscious is little covered, but they are conscious too. So here you see that this uh, boy is uh, nicely looking at this um, um, polar bear. <clears throat> and also we can see that uh, soul uh, we see around, uh, like, you know, even this mic uh, need a battery. Uh, you know, before going to our bed, we, we put charge for many things. We need everything here, need energy, but the soul is uh, self. Soul don't need the battery, you know. Even the, we can observe that, right? Um, when we, uh, um, when our body get tired, then we go to bed, sleep, and then even the, our body is resting, but the mind works. When the mind also gone, then the, we go to sleep. So it's always, soul is always active. So we are getting to the last uh, segment. Um, so we need to understand, um, as I explained, okay, um, so we understood about this uh, uh, for body, soul, and soul features. So what, what, what is the advantage? What is the benefits of this, right? By knowing this. So it's Brahma, Bhuta, Prasannatma. So when we understand that we are not this body, we are a spirit soul, we are a spirit soul, that's it, we become a joyful. Arjun asks Krishna, I cannot fight with my friends, relatives, colleagues, oh, sorry, not colleagues, why I am saying colleagues. <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> so he said, uh, Krishna said, no. 
they, they never die. Nothing can happen to the soul. Nothing can be done to the soul. Krishna confirmed that. The problem with us is we always in the anxiety. You know, something may happen, so that may harm me, or something like a um, something. Uh, if I do something that may end up the you know good or bad, I may get honor, dishonor. So we always get into that thing, right? But the that that's a uh, that's we always go through that anxiety. Then the, that's why um, Arjun asked this question to the Krishna. What is the symptom of this uh, the self-realized soul? Krishna says that self-realized soul is not conditioned to the uh, not subject to the bodily or mental conditions. So bodily conditions is what uh, we facing that um, bodily pains, old age, etc. And the mental conditions are, um, you know, all this anxieties, honor, dishonor, all these uh, mind games. So the soul is not subject to that. If a person situated in the soul platform, he don't, uh, uh, he's beyond that. It is uh, mentioned that uh, when we know this point, Vishwam Purnam Sukhayata means that this world becomes the uh, Vaikuntha for them. So the, Krishna is a so merciful as he is our Supreme Father. He don't want uh, his child, children to be suffering with this anxiety and all. So he comes or he sent his representatives in the, in the form of the books and devotees and uh, so that we can understand this uh, concept of soul <clears throat> and the utility of the body. The so second thing is, whatever we see here, everything has a has a, some utility, right? Everything has a utility and purpose. Even though our body also has a utility and purpose. If we don't use that for that purpose, then it will be havoc. Like for example, this mic is there. I. I cannot use this mic to mix the summer. <laughs> the summer will spoil, mic also will spoil. <laughs> like, so we need to use the for specific purpose. So in the same way, the body has a specific purpose. So body supposed to use for a self-realization, not for a sense of gratification. That's the purpose of the, the body, right? So. So as I coming to the first point, health thing, yeah, it is very important. We need to take care about our body because so that because body is like a vehicle for us. Like we car, we have a car, right? We sit in the car. We are not the car, but car is the the vehicle in that we are sitting. We are coming from point A to point B. In the same way, this body is a vehicle. I am the person sitting in this body as a driver, and then I need I need to use this body. Prabhupada is this word, best use of that body. And so we, I use this body to uh, cultivate Krishna consciousness, cultivate spirituality, and to understand who am I, where I need to go, and uh, to make our life successful. So that's very important. So utility is very important. <clears throat> so, and ignite the devotion. So uh, in the purport, uh, it's explained that um, uh, we are prone to forget, but Krishna is not, right? So we need to, um, um, we all have this uh, potency, we all have this uh, devotion, but it is uh, kind of a uh, like dormant stage. Like you see this, uh, this is, I thought this is very nice analogy to, understand this if you see that stick that stick has that uh, the fire is embedded but it get fire 
when it is friction through that uh, surface where that phosphorus um, blocks whatever is there so i feel like that all each each and every phosphorus block is a different different devotees <laughs> so we have to friction with them not not like a fighting but you know we need to make association with them so we can ignite that devotion the which is there already you know and the uh, <clears throat> go beyond death death is very very uh, scary actually it is a scary when we don't know what is death proper nicely explained actually death means um when this body becomes useless soul goes to the another body that's a death so it's very important uh, go beyond death we are actually dying every every day we means the body is dying actually every day not in every day every second even the scientific studies also proves that like each and every cell um of our millions of the cells are dying and new cells are taking birth right so it is it is happening so but we need to understand that um uh it's a scapegoat right like a goat goat story like in slaughter house the the goat is just eating grass enjoying the enjoying the grass uh, and just uh, standing there standing in the queue thinking that i am not going to be slaughtered all my friends will be slaughtered and i'll be safe but actually that goat who is enjoying the grass also turn comes so same thing we also uh not to be like that goat like we should be also very death is coming but uh, same times we need to understand the death is just to the body uh not to the soul right um so that's uh that's the very very important actually there are so many so many thoughts are going on this uh, uh, death like a, for instance uh, um the in our daily life like the uh, the whole support system what we have is uh how to make our uh, life um, very facilitating and very comfortable like all the things which will happen which we see the all developments innovations are happen what you can do so that you will be happy you will be stay happily in this body until your death but there is no um no schools or colleges or which talks about beyond death if you see also there are different professions also right like a you see that uh, the doctor is there he will help the health and then the engineering is there he help to solve the problems of construction the plumber is there who helps the uh, all over uh, the water leakage etc etc so every profession has a some purpose and solve the problem but what about the death death problem that's also to whom we need to go where we have to go like this spiritual science is helping us this association is helping us and this uh, scriptures are helping us so these are all helping us to understand uh, uh, you know something beyond death this is this is something where there is a life after death and then how to uh, how to put a stop to de- this uh, cycle of birth and death so that we need to take the shelter of the shastra guru guru sadhu shastra so that we can understand we can go beyond the death and uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu so merciful 500 years ago he came and he gave this hare krishna maha mantra and uh, um by chanting hare krishna maha mantra our um, desires will be purified so as i explain as we go to the another body why we go to another body because on the basis of our desires we designed our next body so that's why we transmigrate to the another body but if our desires are purified if we are in the that real identity the true ego so then we 
we can go back to our home, right? So until that time, we need to keep repeating this uh, birth after birth. So this is a very, very important uh, thing beyond, go beyond death, go beyond death. Like uh, there is a, um, uh, Krishna is there, and then here I am, and this material whole world, how can I disconnect dis, uh, that cycle of birth and death? You know, and um, we can uh, go back, right? We, we are someone, we are someone, and then we, came, we come from somewhere, and then uh, we are actually real life spirit soul. We have a purpose. We have a meaning to our life. Right? So, it's a, with that I will stop here. Um, so, thank you very much for listening to attentively. Um, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And uh, I would like to uh, take a minute. If you see in this, if you are wondering what is this picture in the right bottom corner, is uh, His Grace um, Baladev Prabhu, who left this uh, world today, noon time, I guess. He is a Satsurup Maharaj, His Holiness Satsurup Maharaj disciple. Mm -hmm. So he was so dedicated and he was so much, he's so much encouraging and so much inspiring to many, many souls. Uh, Krishna consciousness. I thought it's, we can keep him in our prayers. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Share something if you know about him. So, what was his service or how did he come to Krishna consciousness and what was he doing in his service? Yes, so, probably. How did he live? Yeah. So, he's uh, in Tri uh, Trinidad, Tobago. He's uh, 1979 or something he joined. Um, and uh, uh, I I'm fortunate to have his association because I visit Satsuru Maharaj uh, Vasa Puja ceremonies and also that's how me and Rukmavati get a chance to associate with him and talk to him. Uh, the little I know about him, uh, he just dedicated his life, uh, especially at the end, the, to, the, to his spiritual master service, always uh, like at his service, serving him. Uh, he has an ashram, so he's just, uh, just uh, serving his spiritual master. And whenever we go, he's so sweet and uh, um, nicely receiving us and giving all the prasadam and asking everything. So it is so, uh, as a very good exchange. That much I know, but not beyond that. Hare Krishna. Uh, you guys, guys talking and uh, uh, the question I have is like, how do, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the, how the one should be uh, kind of uh, uh, working on to the last uh, moment of their life, uh, of the current life? Um, I mean, the, how the one should be approaching towards the death. Let's say if someone is realizing that now, um, the time is coming to leave this body. Uh, how the one should? Uh, is, is there a first thing? Is there a soul has some consciousness that it can, at that moment, control and act and try to remember, or it's like completely in control of um, the material body or the material uh, existence that it, it cannot do anything at that time. It has to just put suffer and go through the process. Um. So basically, you're asking near death experience, right? Yeah. yeah. So, just I want to start with one uh, example that real 
that happened in my office life. So with my colleagues, we were just talking, and they were talking about, hey, you know that one teenager boy who committed suicide by climbing in some Macy's building? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. And then the other person who is uh, sitting next to me, and uh, so they, he's a, he, one of my neighbor's uh, son is also committed suicide. So maybe he's at the same. So they just matched, right? So then they found out that that's uh, his neighbor's son is the one. It was reported in the newspaper or website that he's the one committed suicide. So then, the, then the, this is a pantry talk, right? This, you know, we, so they were just talking. It's a, I was just a playing audience role, but it's very astonishing me because they are saying that uh, that that kid, like 14 years or something, 14 years, I think, he just uh, committed suicide. Why? Uh, then they, they were talking. They are thinking that. Um, uh, he's going through some mental uh, the, uh, stress and this and that and going, he's committed suicide. And they, they, they spoke this and that, this and that, long story short, I don't want to go through all those things. But they come to the conclusion, both that, you know what, they both have a kids, right? So, you, you know, in this uh, age, even if a kid grows just like that, even without uh, being a mode of goodness, like a, being a good citizen, blah, blah, blah. Even a just, he grows just as an ordinary man. Even if he takes the uh, drugs are okay, but even if he just survive, that is okay. It's, I, I, I just, uh, wow, this is uh, like, a, that's how it is. That's how it is there outside world. People are thinking that, um, uh, not about goodness. Even, even, even if it just, just survive, that is okay. That's how the world is. I will connect to the what you are saying. So, at the time of death, right? So imagine, um, it's a consciousness. Is uh, as we discussed, right? The um, when we uh, um, when we are in deathbed. It is described in the, I think, Agama Shastra, I think, Garuda, Garuda Purana, I think. It's described that it is, uh, the pain is like a, I just am speculating the number, some thousands of uh, ants are killing and Scorpius. scorpion. You know, it is like that. That, that, uh, that is the experience when we are living the body. So it is so difficult, it is so difficult to, focus. For that matter, even when we fall sick, uh, sometimes we have a perception that, yeah, you know, if I fall sick, you know, at least I will sleep, uh, you know, I will take the rest. But it's so difficult, you know, we, you cannot even uh, rest properly. So, so it is so difficult to remember. So that's why uh, we have this uh, sadhana bhakti, right? We have been uh, chanting every day Hare Krishna Mahamantra and always singing in the service. Why we are doing? We can do one day and then that's it done, right? Why we need to come every Friday? Why we need to come every Sunday? Why we need to cook? Why we need to attend the um, uh, um, book distribution? Why we need to go to the um, Mangalarti? Why we need to go to the um, Ratha Yatra? Why we are doing, why we are doing, why we are doing, why we are engaging all our mind, body and everything. So that if we keep doing, keep doing, so there is every possibility that even at the moment of the death, there is every possibility we can remember that small aspect. Right? Otherwise, it is so difficult. So, to your point that, um, the, the, if we just to, at the time of death, if we want to just, um, just have that consciousness. I mean, I was just reading this uh, Baldev Prabhu's uh, glorious death. Like uh, uh, he was uh, released uh, from the uh, hospital that uh, he's done, like he's going to die within a couple of days or something. So, and that's it. And then, um, then he was at the hospice and then uh, his spiritual master is side by and all the mm, devotees are around. And uh, he, uh, his holiness, uh, um, Maharaj uh, 
was uh, reading something from the Bhagavad Gita and then all the devotees are chanting and then he left the body. So the, my point is that uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a so fortunate if we are side by devotees when we are leaving the body. If we are, side, if we are living with the devotees surrounding, we are leaving the body, at least they will, they will remind us. Even though with our uh, subconscious mind, you know, we don't know, right? So much uh, life after life, life after life, we are transmigrating, transmigrating. Who knows? Something, some thoughts may, boom, may come up. But when the devotees are around us, that something may strike. Something, if we, if we just remember something related to the spiritual Krishna consciousness, boom. So, the to your point, yeah, this one is this sadhana is required, the practice is required, and then so that every chance that we can remember, and also, uh, you know, the what happened with the Baldev Prabhu's case, if we are fortunate, that is also happened with us because devotees are always come, devotees always come, always come. So if we are around the devotees, there is every possibility then they can, they can push us and then they will make our path wherever the destination but that destination will be better than um, than the normally if we take a death um, without following this path so answers that question Prabhuji thank you